Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, every time we celebrate the Eucharist, God gives us Jesus Christ, His greatest gift. And every time we celebrate the Eucharist, God also opens our eyes so that we may see that we are gifts to one another. Today, we celebrate the World Day of Grandparents. And so we offer this Mass to thank God for grandparents and to pray for them. Let us now prepare ourselves to receive Jesus as He comes to us in this Mass. Let us call to mind our many sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elijah the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits, and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, Give it to the people to eat, for thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of your glory, of your kingdom, and speak of your might. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all His ways and holy in all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand.
prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages' worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve weaker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, have you observed that there is a similarity between our first reading and our gospel today? In both readings, there was a miracle. People were fed. But the miracle started with meager means. Sa unang pagbasa at sa Ebanghelyo, nagkaroon ng himala ng pagpapakain ng mga tao. Pero yung mga pagpapakain at yung himala nagsimula sa kokoonti. In our first reading, from the 20 barley loaves that was given by a man to the prophet Elisha, 100 men were able to eat. 20 nakakain 100. And in our gospel, from the five 
barley loaves, and two fish that a young boy brought, Jesus was able to feed more than 5,000 people. Napakain ang marami mula sa kokoonting tinapay at isda. And they were not only fed. In fact, there was an abundance of food. Sobra-sobra ang naging biyaya. That is why in both stories, there were leftovers. And Jesus explicitly instructed His disciples in the Gospel, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. Tipunin ninyo ang mga natirang tinapay at isda para walang masayang. My dear brothers and sisters, by saying that, Jesus is telling His disciples and all of us that everything is a gift. Lahat ay biyaya mula sa Diyos. Parang sinasabi niya sa mga alagad at sa ating lahat, nagsimula naman tayo sa iilang pirasong tinapay at isda, pero libo-libo ang napakain ang bawat piraso ng tinapay at ang bawat isang isda ay biyaya mula sa Diyos. Nabusog ang lahat, may sumobra pa. Kaya kahit na yung sobra, hindi dapat itapon, tipunin, dahil yan ay biyaya din. Even fragments, even leftovers, should be collected, should be gathered because they are gifts and gifts should not be thrown away. My dear brothers and sisters, we live in a very wasteful society. Aksayado at mahilig magtapon ng kung ano-ano. Pope Francis has a term for this. He said, we live in a throwaway culture. A culture that is so used to throwing leftovers away. Mahilig tayong magtapon. Kapag hindi na kailangan, tapon. Kapag hindi na gusto, tapon. Kapag pinagsawaan na, tapon. Kapag wala ng pakinabang sa akin, itatapon ko na lang. No wonder we have so many wastes around us. Ang daming basura kasi ang dami nating tinatapon. And sadly, unfortunately, we do not only throw things, we also throw relationships. We also throw people. Ilang ugnayan na ba ang tinapo natin dahil wala ng pakinabang sa akin? Ilang relationship na ba ang tinapo natin dahil ayaw ko na? Ilang tao na ba ang tinapo natin dahil pinagsawaan ko na? We live in a throwaway culture. We throw many things, many relationships, and many people away. But in our gospel today, by telling us, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted, Jesus is telling us, that we should not live in a culture that is so used to throw away. Instead, we should live in a culture that recognizes everything as a gift. 
para hindi tayo aksayado at tapon ng tapon, tingnan natin ang lahat ng bagay bilang regalo, bilang biyaya mula sa Diyos. Let us look at the things around us as gifts. Let us look at the world, our environment, as gifts. Let us look at our many experiences, good or bad, happy or sad, as gifts. Let us look at our relationships as gifts. Let us look at one another as gifts. Because when we look at one another, the world around us, relationships, things and experiences as gifts, we will keep them. We will gather them. We will treasure them. We will love them. Because you never throw away gifts. Mga minamahal na kapatid, sana ganyan ang pagtingin natin, ang pananaw natin, na ang lahat ay regalo ng Diyos. At dahil yan ay regalo sa iyo, iingatan mo, papahalagahan mo, hindi mo basta itatapon at aaksayahin. Do we have that perspective in life? Ganyan ba tayong tumanaw sa buhay, sa ating sariling buhay at sa buhay ng ating kapwa? Ang ating bang pamumuhay ay nandoon sa throw away culture, throw away attitude o ang ating pananaw ay gift. Lahat ay regalo na dapat pahalagahan. Yung pagkain sa ating hapag, ang tingin ba natin dyan ay biyaya o itinatapon na lang kapag ayaw ko ng pagkain? Ang dami-daming nagugutom pero marami rin namang pagkain itinatapon nasasayang dahil hindi natin tinitingnan bilang biyaya. Yung tubig, tinitingnan ba natin na biyaya mula sa Diyos? O aksayado tayo sa tubig? Hindi natin pinapahalagahan ang bawat patak ng tubig. Samantalang may mga tao na halos walang tubig, walang mainom na malinis na tubig, walang tubig para sa kanilang pangangailangan. Do we look at the food in our, on our tables and the water that runs through our faucet as gifts from God? Sa mga mag-asawa, how do you look at each other? After many years of being married, kapag nagkakasal po kami dito, nagtutuwa ako. Kasi yung mga bagong kasal, pag nagtitinginan sila habang kinakasal, kinikilig. Parang ang tingin nila sa isa't isa, regalo ng Diyos, tuwang-tuwa. Pero pagkatapos ng maraming taon ng pagsasama, bakit minsan ang tingin sa isa't isa, parang lumang appliance na pwede nang itapon dahil wala nang silbi, wala nang gamit, pinagsawaan na. Kapag nag-aaway ang mag-asawa, ang pamilya, ang magkakamag-anak, magkakaibigan, ano ang ating ginagawa? Do we just want to throw away other people? to throw away our husband or wife because of things that we do, we do not agree with. Baka ang tingin na natin sa isa't isa, ang solusyon na lamang natin sa pag-aaway, itapon ang isa't isa. Parents, 
How do you look at your children, especially the one that gives you so much headache? Gusto niyo na bang palayas, palayasin sa inyong bahay? Baka magandang tingnan din bilang biyaya. Children, how do you look at your parents? Lalong-lalo na yung nag-uulyanin, makulit, lalong-lalo na yung mga may sakit na magulang. Do we want to get rid of them? Do we want to simply throw them away dahil pabigat lang sa akin? Government officials, how do you look at the taxes given by the people entrusted to the government? Do you use them well? Pinaghirapan ng mga tao? Or you just throw them away? You waste them? Employers, how do you look at your employees? Kapag mayroong isang empleyado na mahirap, hindi ginagawa ng mabuti ang trabaho, gusto ba nating paalisin? Or do we look at our people as gifts? And even employers, how do you look at your employers? Do you see them as gifts? Or something that you want to throw away? And how do you look at us, your priests? Do you look at us as gifts to the community? O kaya minsan, nagrarali sa obispo para alisin ang paring ayaw namin. How do we look at our own lives? Do we look at our life as gift or as a trash? How do we look at life in the womb? Yung buhay sa sinapupunan, ang tingin ba natin dyan, problemang dapat alisin o biyaya ng Diyos, regalo ng Diyos? How do we look at our faith? How do we look at our being Christians? Sabi ni San Pablo sa ating ikalawang pagbasa ngayon, you live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. The Christian faith is a gift that we received. Do we treasure it or do we waste it? My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus tells us today, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. Let us look at each other as gifts. You know, today is the first time that we will celebrate the World Day of Grandparents. Pagdaigdigang araw ng mga lolo at mga lola. At ito'y itinatag ni Pope Francis na malapit sa kapistahan ni Saint Joachim and Saint Anne, mga magulang ni Maria, lolo at lola ni Jesus. At magandang tingnan din ang tingin natin sa mga lolo at lola. Do we look at them as gifts? And the grandparents, how do you look at yourselves? Minsan sasabihin ng mga nakatatanda, Matanda na kami, mahina na kami, wala na kaming magagawa, wala na kaming silbi, left over na. But you are still gifts. You could still share something. You could still give something. You could even be missionaries of God's Word through the witness of your life. Pwede pa ring maglingkod, magbigay, at mag maging misyonero kahit na sa katandaan. Even old age is a gift. My dear brothers and sisters, let us look at each other 
as God's gifts. You are a gift from God. I am a gift of God. And we are gifts of God to one another. Let us treasure each other as God's gifts. For when we treasure and love each other as gifts from God, we will never ever throw each other away. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the miracle of feeding 5,000 people, our Lord shows us that the Father will give us everything we need. Let us ask Him for all the good gifts He can provide for us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our pastors, especially the Pope and bishops, that they may continue to nourish us with sound doctrine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elderly and grandparents, that even in their twilight years, they may not cease being witnesses of Christian values and strength of character, which are the firm foundations of every society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who are hurting and abandoned among our elderly, those who are lonely and sick, that they may find healing and care, consolation and forgiveness, peace and companionship through us in the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may deepen our conviction on the value of every human life form, conception to death, and be resolute in effectively shunning the throwaway culture that sees and treats the old and the weak as objects that have outlived their usefulness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may come to the eternal feast in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our own petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers. We also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Most merciful Father, hear the prayers of the people you have gathered to offer and receive the eternal gift, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer for the elderly and grandparents. God, our Amen. loving Father, you, you are, are the, the source of life and of all gifts. You lovingly sustain us at every moment of our lives, and you bring us to fullness of life. In Jesus, your Son and our brother, we thank you for the wonderful gift of our grandparents and the elderly. You have given them to us to be our guide as they share with us the wealth of their experiences and the wisdom that they have gained through the years. We thank you for making them witnesses to us of your abiding presence and care at every turn and change of life. We pray that you bless all of them with joy and peace, with satisfaction at the fruits of their labor, and with the faithful love of their family. Strengthen their trust in your healing mercy in the face of the mistakes and sins of the past, Grant them the joy of companionship of their loved ones and friends. Protect them from all harm and evil that can obscure their vision of eternal peace and joy in your kingdom. Give them the patience and courage to bear the cross of sickness and weakness of the body. Help them see their sufferings and discomfort as their sharing in the Paschal mystery of Christ. Grant us all their family and friends the grace of firm conviction and faith in the value and dignity of every human person created in your image and redeemed by the sacrifice of your Son on the cross. May this help us to continue to support, respect, and love them we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Starting next Sunday, August 1, we will be implementing the use of the Stay Safe application endorsed by the local government of Manila for a more centralized contact tracing. This provides for a quick, contactless, and more efficient contact tracing. At ipapaliwanag po namin ang proseso na ating gagawin para sa paggamit ng Stay Safe application. The first step is to go to the website www.staysafe.ph You will be asked to register your mobile number and then you will key in the one-time PIN that will be sent to you. You will then be asked to provide some personal information and your health declaration. And then, you will be provided with your own personal QR code. Please save the picture of the QR code on your cell phone. O kaya naman po, sa mga hindi nagsa-cell phone, pwede rin namang i-print Pwedeng ilag ipalaminate, pwedeng uh, ilagay sa mga keychain para daladala ninyo sa pagpunta sa Manila Cathedral. And every time you will attend Mass at the Manila Cathedral, upon entrance, our security staff will scan your personal QR code. 
Ito po ay gagawin natin simula sa susunod na linggo, August 1. And so we ask for your cooperation na sana po itong buong linggo, subukan po natin na mag-register sa staysafe.ph uh, and generate the, our personal QR code which we will use as we come to the Manila Cathedral. At uh, sana po ay uh, yung mga hindi masyadong teki ay tulungan ng kanilang mga apo, anak, no? para maka-generate ng personal QR code. And we will use this for the safety of everyone and for a more efficient contact tracing. Maraming salamat po sa inyong cooperation. We also wish to thank you for coming today to the Manila Cathedral to attend the Mass despite the weather. Salamat din po sa ating mga staff and servants ng Manila Cathedral na naglilingkod sa atin ngayon. We also wish to thank the thousands who are joining this Mass online. Thank you for always uh, supporting the Manila Cathedral and for being part of our online community. May God bless this new week and may God open our eyes so that we may see everything as His gift to us. Let us now stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessings, now and forever. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to His words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness now and forever. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.